this is my personal story and I hope you will find it useful in some way. So first of all, who am I? I am a lead cloud software engineer here at Soleta and I'm also a part of a customer data team at Yle, which you probably know is Finland's national public broadcasting company. So that's one of our customers and I work with them. And I've been working with um, cloud and main AWS for the past several years. There has been some certifications and stuff and the latest was the data analytics certification that I got pretty recently. And uh, also for about a year now, I have been a member of the AWS Community Builders program, which is a program created by AWS for the AWS enthusiasts and active community members. And it used to be invite only, but now anybody can apply to it. So if this sounds at all interesting, please go check it out and apply and maybe you will become part of the community as well, because it's a lot of fun actually. And lately I actually had an honor to be listed among the top global cloud thought leaders as a next generation leader uh, by Wislabs. And this came really as a complete surprise, but as I said, it, it, it was a huge honor and kind of a, a very uh, kind of great appreciation of what I have been doing lately. And there might be some other things coming to this list, but I can neither confirm nor deny them at this point. So if you're interested, just follow me, for example, on Twitter and you will soon learn more. And yeah, no presentation can go without a picture of my cat Lizzie. So she's always here helping me with all the presentations by just sleeping next to me. So meet Lizzie as well. But let's maybe rewind a little bit and, and see how did I actually end up where I ended up. And well, maybe we don't need to wind back to that far, but I kind of like this picture of me as a very serious two year old. So I guess I was pretty serious back then. But around the same time, when I actually was six years old, um, I saw my first computer and it had an MS-DOS paintbrush installed on it. And now I might be revealing my age here, but who cares? And yeah, I saw the paintbrush and I was just blown away. I loved it immediately. It was the greatest thing ever. And probably like for any kid at that point, that just fascinated me. And I actually used and loved it for a very long time. I even liked it more than, than all the PC games and stuff. But I, I was completely blown away. And then around the same time, I actually wrote my first program in basic programming language which basically meant that the teacher gave me a piece of paper with the code and I happily retyped it in the computer and things worked. And that was my idea of what programming is. And well, I had, I was completely fascinated with all of that, all the new world that opened up and I had no idea what that meant, but I wanted to do this when I grew up, though I, I have no idea what that actually meant, but who cares when you're six years old, right? So, Fast forward just a couple of years, maybe. I ended up getting not one, but two master's degrees in computer science because, well, why not? <laughs> well, because I actually enjoyed learning a lot and, and that's how it went. And of course I learned a lot of stuff during those studies. But one of the things that I thought was very important for me to learn is that the things that I never want to be doing. And the, the list was the following. I never want to program Java. I never want to touch any web applications and I definitely don't want to touch with a long, long stick any databases, <laughs> which when looking back, I guess the last one is the most absurd and ironic one because currently I'm mostly dealing with data and data related technologies. And again, where, how, what would I do without the data really? But that was my idea around the time of what I will not ever do. And you might actually ask that, <laughs> what did I want to do then? Well, I wanted to be this very serious uh, system programmer, maybe in C++ or a lower lev level language, but doing something, something like that for sure. That was my idea of my future at that point. But then for some reason I thought that maybe studying wasn't enough for me, so I wanted to acquire one more degree and went to study PhD uh, in signal processing and worked as a researcher at the same time. And it was, I pretty, pretty quickly learned that it was a pretty lonesome uh, job and process. You sit there and you research something and there was a very little coding involved and all of it was in MATLAB. And 
it was kind of it didn't feel like something I was wanting wanting all these years to do. So it took me like one and a half years, but then I basically did something I very very rarely do in my life. I just decided to quit that entire thing and, and go some different direction. But one thing I think it made me realize during this one and a half years of, of research and concentrating on a specific topic is that I actually prefer to go deep in one subject and study the ins and outs of one subject rather than kind of spread around and learn as many subjects as possible. So I started to realize that I'm probably a specialist rather than generalist, though I didn't have those words in my vocabulary at that point yet. But I guess my academic background just kind of set me on on that path as well. Well, then I had a very short gig where I actually got to code C++. Yay! <laughs> and it was actually more of a research project with some graphical accelerators on embedded Linux systems. So it didn't last long. So after that, I took a sort of a detour. Well, um, I'm not natively Finnish, so I decided to go study Finnish language for like four or five months full time. And I must say that like looking back, it was probably one of the smartest decisions both in like personal uh, life and my career as well. So I'm, I'm very happy I did it. But after all this studying and researching and whatnot, I finally did it. I came to Soleta and I started to work as a software designer. So that, that was great. But guess what? Those were the exact technologies I ended up working with. So I was coding in Java. I was creating web applications and of course there were databases involved. So there was a lesson there that I should probably never say never in that sense and should be open to, to everything that comes comes my way. I was actually thrilled to work as, as a software designer. Finally, I finally got my hands dirty and I finally got to code for a living uh, and I did it for actual customers instead of just some hobby project. So I was very ecstatic. I was like a kid in the candy shop and uh, I was finally doing something useful and I had a team I was working with. So those were all the things that I was striving for and, and, and I finally got there. And of course, there was like a lot, a lot to learn in the very beginning. There were so many new things. And during all those years, I tried a lot of different roles. I was trying to see what will fit, what will feel better, what will be my thing. I think at some point I still realized that, that, that something is missing. I actually want to do more. I want to be more. I, I kind of, this is not all it is to that. And then actually opportunity presented itself in the form of my former team lead who asked from the team who would be interested in taking some courses in uh, AWS. And at that point, AWS was nothing but a buzzword for me. I knew very, very little about it. I knew that it had something to do with infra and, and I also knew that infra is something I don't want to deal with ever, like this list of Java uh, databases and web applications. So there was infrastructure as well there. So uh, all, all that, but then I, I said, why not? Let, let's give it a go. I have nothing to lose, so to say. So I ended up taking some courses and uh, ended up doing a certification and stuff. And I immediately got hooked up. I basically was very, very, very into it. First thought was that do other people know that this thing exists? It's so cool. Why, why don't we all use it and, and things like that? So I was very, very excited. And it also uh, expanded, expanded my horizons quite a lot. So I, I started to do so much more than I was doing before. And there were so much new things like data engineering and like the cloud architecture and, and like AWS itself and the microservice architecture and stuff like that. So it, it opened up the horizons quite a lot for me. But I think like the most um, useful thing or the most valuable thing for me that came out of that is that uh, I became a member of AWS Community Nordics here, here in Finland. So the thing was that I started something from scratch. So I knew nothing about the subject. I again was feeling kind of stupid and starting to learn from scratch. So I needed the community to learn from and I needed as much information as I get. So I started to go to different meetups uh, in Helsinki, in Tampere, 
and listening to the presentations that the people were giving about their work and the things that they have learned and, and uh, trying to learn from them. And then at some point I thought, well, by now I have learned maybe a thing or two through my project, so I might try sharing it with others because it might be beneficial to other people as well. So others might learn from that as well. So I, I decided to give it a go and, and kind of gave a talk at the uh, local meetup in Tampere. And then I got a pretty good feedback. So I decided, well, why not? I'll try it again and, and, and did a bit bigger meetup in Helsinki. Sorry. And uh, then there were some internal events. Then there was Solidacore and stuff. And then there was like my first big international event, which was the AWS Community Day Nordics in, in Stockholm. And well, I was terrified. <laughs> it was a big stage. There were a lot of people that were sharing stage with me who I admired before. So I, I was very kind of ecstatic and very <laughs> nervous about it, but it opened a lot of possibilities for me. And after that, things just came keep on coming. And uh, I participated in some podcasts and wrote some blogs. And, uh, I actually had a couple of conferences, international conferences, where people actually had to pay to listen to me speak, which was completely outrageous for me. Like, who would pay to listen to what I have to say? But then it would, well, of course, they didn't pay me. They paid the organizers of the conference. But still, it was kind of some, something new and still blows my mind till this day. And then there were other, other events and podcasts. And actually, I ended up kind of speaking at a podcast that... Uh, I was listening from the very beginning of my cloud journey. I was listening to the podcasts, and I was always in awe of this, um, uh, of the hosts of the podcast. So they were my personal heroes. And then I also always admired the, the guests. And all, and all of a sudden, I was one of the guests on the podcast. So it was pretty kind of mind blowing for me. It still is really. And all in all, I pretty much ended up loving all of it. Though I must say, it is nerve-breaking every single time I have to get on stage or even in front of the computer. And it's always a lot of work, but still I love, love, love it. And uh, one of the reasons for that is a saying that I, I like very much. And it goes like that. Uh, if you want to learn something, you read about it. If you want to understand something, you write about it. And then if you want to master something, you actually teach it. So I think that has been my main strategy for the past several years without realizing it is that I actually learned tons by teaching or trying to teach or share my knowledge with other people. So it has been very beneficial to me personally and my personal development and growth, growth as a professional as well. So I pretty much kind of can sign under, under this statement. And I think that's what I've been uh, mostly living according to. And um, I must say that never in a million years have I thought that I will end up where I am currently, and I'm pretty happy about where I am at the moment. But it brings me probably to the things that uh, people uh, say or think about the career development. And I don't think they worked for me or they work for me or they don't work for anybody, I think, that that well. And uh, one of them is that the question that you probably heard, all of you, it's the, one of the most popular questions during the job interviews is, where do you see yourself in five years? So I guess the assumption is that you need to have this grand plan and this idea of, of where are you going and uh, like a five-year plan, how to get there. And if you don't, then somehow you are not fitted for the position. Well, you know what? I don't think this is right, or actually I think it's bullshit. <laughs> because, well, I personally don't know where I'm going to end up five years from now, to tell you the truth, and that's a great thing. Because if somebody would have told me like five years ago that, hey, this is the place where you need to be in five years, or you want to be in five years, I think I would be so overwhelmed <laughs> that I would be just paralyzed and not able to do anything. So it's kind of, it takes you small steps to get where you are. And you don't necessarily need that grand plan to get there. And as Artos was also saying that it's not a linear development that happens in our career. Like for me, it was more of a, this random, you know, Brownian motion of a particle suspended somewhere. So I, I was going in all possible directions that felt right at the moment. And 
I ended up somewhere. Probably th this is not, of course, the end of the journey, but I'm here now and I'll go some other direction from me. So I personally have no idea what I'm going to do in five years. The other one, also pretty common belief, I think, is that somehow your title, job title, defines what you do or what you have to do, or it limits where you can grow or what you can be interested in. And I think it's not true at all. Actually, I think no title, no word or combination of words or no label should define us in any way possible. So we choose where we want to move despite the title and we grow the direction we want to grow. We don't pay attention to title that we have. And actually, I basically defined my own title. <laughs> I came up with my own title and that's the title that felt right at that particular moment. It probably won't be right in several years, but now it is, and, and still, even <clears throat> with that title or without, I will still be doing the things that I like and I think are good for me to do. Which actually brings me to, to the last point uh, of what actually Arte also mentioned in the Q&A part, but I think the very or the most important thing and the one thing that matters the most is your passion, like finding what is that passion of yours. Find that thing that sparks joy for you in your work. And for me personally, goal was never to become a senior or a lead or get a better salary, though of course those are nice things and they come along with it. But the goal for me personally was to find something that feels mine and the thing that I can excel at and I can improve in constantly and uh, at the moment it's AWS and it gives me possibility to learn a lot and also on the other hand it's also helping others to learn which has been a, a kind of a joy and a passion uh, and a very rewarding things I think as I told you already but that's me I mean the passion can be really anything it can be databases or programming languages or some specific tech or agile I mean you you pick whatever you want to the most important is that you really feel for it. And um, uh, I think to get there, to find that passion, first and foremost, you need to be open and <laughs> never say never, as I used to do, probably still do, but never close the doors before yourself, before even kind of entering them a bit. And um, that implies kind of trying a lot of different things before you probably find that one thing or that several things that spark joy for you. You need to try a lot of different things to know what you actually like and what you don't like. And one part of it is, is that you shouldn't be afraid to start something from scratch. And this is surprisingly difficult, especially if you are somewhat senior, so you have had already a long background, you know your thing, you are very good at your thing, and then you need to start something completely different. So. It is very uncomfortable and it is very difficult and you probably are going to feel stupid in the beginning. I know I, I have, but uh, and you will feel like, you know, nothing. But I, I personally think that's a very good thing. And that's the place where we start growing. And that's that's the feeling that we need every now and then a feeling of us not really knowing anything. And that, that's a very, very important thing for me personally. And finally, my personal personal kind of uh, experience says that just say yes. Say yes as many times as possible because the possibilities come your way all the time in, in all shapes and forms. It can be a new project or it can be a new technology, a book to read, a course to take, a person to meet. Uh, there are so many different kind of doors and small windows around us that we maybe don't even notice. But most important is to, to say yes. To, to as many of them as possible, just to find that thing that you want to do. And I must say that for me, this is totally like it, it, it's very difficult. And my knee jerk reaction is always to like when, when somebody asks me to speak at a conference or I don't know, at, at a podcast or do a video or something, my knee jerk reaction is no, 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 <laughs> I, I'm not going to do this. No, I, I just can't. And then I give myself time, like maybe a day or something, I process it and then I actually say yes, even if I don't want to. And from my personal experience, there hasn't been a single case when I actually would regret saying yes. There were things that didn't go as I planned. Well, things happen. 
but I never regret it going for them because it's it's always bringing you to the next level in one way or form. And as I said, I'm pretty happy with where my saying yes brought me to at this point of life. And well, who knows where it will bring me next. Time will show. And this is actually all from my part. So thank you very much for listening. And I don't know if there are any questions or not, but I guess I will soon find out. Thank you.